This video is about how to let R know where files are on our computer so that it can load them in and use them in our analyses. So far in this course, we've been using RStudio Cloud and placing data files directly where R knows how to find them for you. But we also often want to be able to work with RStudio on our own computers, and that means that finding files is a little more complicated. But in this lesson, we'll learn how to do that effectively. To use data stored on a computer, we need to tell R where it is. And to do that, we use something called paths. This is basically a description of the directories in which the files we need to access are stored. And to look at this, uh, I'm going to do today's lesson working on RStudio on my own computer. Uh, you can see that we don't have that bar from RStudio Cloud up at the top. And we're going to start by downloading some data. So I'm actually going to go to the course website. Uh, so we're at datacarpentry.org slash semesterbiology. And you'll see on the front page under For Students, there's a link to data sets. And this has links to every data set that we're working with this semester. So if you ever want to uh, download this data again, either as part of class uh, to work with it locally uh, or to do something else with it, it's all here. And let's go ahead and download some of this data. And I'm going to do the shrubdimensions.csv. And for most of you, if you just click on this link, it will download. But where did it download to? If I click on this arrow, it will give me the option to show in folder. And so I can click on that. And this will look different depending on the operating system, but generally across the top, you'll see the folder that things are stored in. And so mine is stored in Home Downloads. So let's go back to our studio. If I tried to load the data in, in the way that we've been doing it so far, things wouldn't work. And so if I said data is equal to read.csv, quotes, and then the name of the file, which was shrub dimensions labeled dot CSV. If I run this line, I'm going to get an error. And what it says if we read down a little ways is cannot open file, no such file or directory. And that means it can't find the file where I've asked to load it from. And that's because it's not where I am. Paths can be either relative or absolute. And we'll start with an absolute path that always describes precisely where something is on the computer. When we look to see where it had been downloaded, it was stored in our home directory. and in the downloads subdirectory. Now the home directory on different operating systems is slightly different. Uh, on Linux and Mac, that's typically in forward slash home, forward slash your username, which in my case is Ethan. And so that's my home directory. And then within that, there's the downloads directory. And then another forward slash and then the name of the file uh, that's been stored there. And so now if we run this, we'll see that it successfully loads the data. And that's because I've told it exactly where the file is. It's in the home directory, in the Ethan directory, in the downloads directory, and the file is named shrubdimensionslabeled.csv. Uh, if I was on Windows, uh, this would actually look more like this. Instead of uh, home here, we would have K 
capital U users is what this would look like. Okay. We can see that folders or directories are separated by forward slashes. And then when we type out the full name of the file, we also include its extension at the end. That's the part after the dot. As I mentioned, paths can also be relative. And so if I know where I am, I can write the position relative to where I am already. To find out where we are in R, we can type the function get wd. This stands for get working directory, and it's a function, and we don't need to pass it any arguments, but we do need the parentheses. And if I run that, it will tell me where R is starting from, where is, what is the working directory uh, where the program runs from. And so this tells us, I'm going to get rid of the Windows version here, is that we are already here. And so if I wanted to do this using a relative path, I would say data is equal to read.csv, quotes, and then with no forward slash to start with, I would say downloads and then shrub dimensions labeled.csv. And this will run in exactly the same way. And not having this forward slash is important because that tells the computer that we're starting where we are and then going into the downloads directory. Whereas if we have the forward slash at the beginning, that means start at the very top of the directory tree for the computer. Uh, so start at, at C colon on Windows or root on Mac and Linux. Now, if you're on Windows, this would look a little different. And that's because if we ran get WD on Windows, what we would see is not just forward slash users, forward slash your username, so Ethan for me, you would also see uh, another slash and documents. And that's because the documents folder is often set as the home directory on Windows. What this means is that if we wanted to get into the downloads directory, we would first have to go up a layer in the directory structure so that we could get to users slash Ethan and then go into the downloads folder. And I'm going to show you how to do this. It's slightly more complicated, but the good news is that after this demonstration, we won't need to worry about this because we're going to be using projects instead. So if we were doing this on Windows, we would say data is equal to read.csv quotes. And then we would put two dots. And that just means go up one level in the directory structure, and then forward slash, and then downloads, and then shrub dimensions labeled dot CSV. So again, that's a small change for Windows. We won't need to worry about this uh, again for uh, the rest of the course because we'll just use projects that we'll talk about in a minute. So now I'm going to go ahead uh, and remove that Windows specific stuff uh, and keep going. And what we've been using so far to load data is just a special case of this relative path where the file name is actually in the working directory already. And so if we started our studio in such a way that it was in slash home slash Ethan slash downloads, then we would just include the file name because we have no slash to tell it that this is relative. And then we have the full file name to complete the path. 
And so this is what we've been doing already, is using relative paths and what we're generally going to want to do uh, in order to work effectively with files uh, on multiple different computers. And so this raises the question, how do we set the working directory? One of the common things that you see uh, is folks manually setting the working directory using the function setwd and providing it with a working directory or alternatively uh, doing something like clicking on session and then set work directory and then choosing something from over here. Have you used set working directory before? If you have, uh, you're in good company. Lots of people use this. It's very common to see it in our code. Uh, but has it ever caused you any problems? Have you gone and tried to work on code on a different computer and had to change this? Or tried working with someone else's files uh, that they wrote on their computer that don't work on yours? Running into these sorts of problems is very common. And that's why, in general, we want to avoid using setwd at all, because it means that your code will only work on the one specific computer that you've set it up to work on. And that means that you can't swap over to your laptop from your desktop and have your code just work. And it certainly means that if you share your code with other people, it won't work for them. And so to get around that, we need a way to have the working directory get set automatically and then use relative paths in our code uh, so that the code always knows where the data is that it wants to load. And the simplest way to do this in our studio is to use projects. And in fact, we've been using them already all semester long. In our Studio Cloud, every time you click on an assignment or every time you click on this new project button, it creates a new project for you. And each project is a self-contained unit of work captured in a single folder or directory and any subdirectories that are in it. And when code is set up in a project, it then treats all locations as relative to that top directory. And so you can then tell it where code is relative to the directory that the project is set up in. To do this on a local RStudio setup, when we open RStudio to work on something, we have to create a new project. And we do that by clicking on File, clicking on New Project. I don't want to save this for now. Uh, and then clicking on either an existing directory, if you already have a directory that's created and has some files in it that you want to be your project, or we can click on New Directory if we're starting something new. I'll click on New Directory and new project. And then I can click on browse to navigate to where I want to put that. Uh, I'll put it in my home directory here. And then I can give it a name. Uh, let's say uh, data carp entry. Oh, I navigated to Dropbox. I'll navigate to home now. And I'll add data carpentry up here. Uh, we also see something interesting here, which is that home directories are often indicated by a tilde. So that's a shortcut or shorthand for uh, our home directory. And I'll go ahead and click Create Project. And so now if I type get wd down here, we'll see that my working directory is home slash Ethan slash data carpentry. And so any file I put in there uh, 
R, this R project will know how to get to. Let's go back to my file that I downloaded from earlier. I'm going to actually copy it. And now I can go to my home directory and go to uh, this data carpentry directory we just created. And I'm going to paste the file in here. And we can see that it already popped up over here in our files menu. So that's, we know it's in the working directory because that's actually what we see on our files tab. And so now if I try to read this file in, data is equal to read.csv, shrub dimensions labeled, everything will work. This also means that we can create subdirectories to store things, and that can be really handy for things like data. And so let's actually move this. I'm going to create a new folder. We'll call it our data directory. I'm then going to click here on shrub dimensions labeled, click on more, and click move. And then I'm going to select the data directory I just created. So now we can see that our file is in this data directory. And so if I want to read it now, we use our relative paths. And so it's in the data subdirectory, and that's where the file is. So it's relative, so no forward slash at the beginning, the name of the directory, a forward slash, and then the name of the file. And everything will run. So this is the easiest way to handle things uh, in our studio. We'll see that the way it's done that is it's created a .r project file. That file isn't the project itself. It's just contains some information about the project. Uh, and we generally don't want to change this manually. You just leave it in the directory and let it do its thing. And then we can save our work in here, uh, myproject.r. And this will all be stored in this one directory. One other handy thing about our Studio projects uh, is you can quickly switch back and forth between existing projects. And so if I go down to recent projects and choose my intro to forecasting class, It will take me over to that class. It'll be in the working directory for that class already. And everything will be laid out just like it was when I left. So if I've changed the way windows are set or I have files open, they'll stay that way. And so then we'll see if I switch back to data carpentry. I get the exact state of things when I left. My myproject.r file is open and I'm ready to get to work. So that's the idea behind paths and projects and how we can use them to help R know where our files are. Paths provide information about where a file is stored on a computer. They are a series of directory names separated by slashes with the highest level directory coming first. If we include a slash at the front of the path, that tells the computer that it's absolute and it should start at the base directory at C colon or in the root directory. If we don't, it tells it that the path is relative and the computer should start looking for the path where it is currently from the current working directory. We use projects to make it easy to use relative paths in a way that works across computers and we do that uh, by clicking File and starting a new project for each project we want to work with and then treating each project as an isolated folder that contains everything we need, including code and data for that project. If we start with a forward slash, that means the path is absolute.
Ah, phones going off in class. Not always just the students.